research looks at how we can support children who learn English as a new language when they start school. It's about one in four U.S. kids, and that's a big task to learn English as well as learning numeracy, science, reading. And so we really want to create ways that we can support those children and how can we leverage technology to make that an optimal experience and really support those learners and support those teachers. So for this project in particular, I've been working on augmented reality. You can look at the world through a device lens, like a smartphone camera device, and it layers onto it some additional virtual object that doesn't really exist there. So it's like adding a layer of magic or whimsy on that real world around you. A lot of people have played like Pokemon Go, right, where you look out at the real world and these magical little monsters exist. And so the research I'm working on is, what if instead of it being magical monsters, it was little teachers who provided you additional specialized support for English learning? So it's one thing to be able to say, check this out, look at it, the kids get really excited, but we don't really know what happens after that, right? Because we only have a limited number of words. So this funding is gonna help us build out that really rich repository that we can share with our partner schools so we can really see how this works over time. When I started on my research, I never really thought of myself as like a technology person. And it was only when external people said to me, oh, you're a woman in tech. I said, oh, I, I guess I am, I am a woman in tech. Um, and so to then have a recognition from a group like this is, is so validating, it's so meaningful, and it, it helps me really feel seen. My primary focus of research focuses on psychosocial and ethical issues related to HIV prevention and treatment among youth. And of course, HIV prevention and treatment among youth falls within the broader category of sexual health. This project is really focused on creating a sexual health literacy scale. We are really interested in sexual health literacy for health disease prevention, but also for sexual health promotion and empowerment. So we don't, we're not interested in just preventing negative outcomes. We want to contribute in a way that helps to promote positive sexual health outcomes and to empower people to have healthy sexual lives. I want to very sincerely thank everyone who participated in choosing me as a recipient for this award. As a woman and a scholar, this award means a great deal to me, especially given that this award is named after Kathleen Moore, whose legacy as an educator and a philanthropist who dedicated her life to women's issues will definitely have a lasting impact on me and the people that I can reach through this research. My research focuses on image-based sexual abuse Image-based sexual abuse is a range of behaviors that include the non-consensual production, distribution, or use of intimate or sexually explicit images to control another person's behavior. Oftentimes, people will, who are victimized by image-based sexual abuse, particularly women, will feel that they're unable to seek help, especially from law enforcement. And so the goals of these research projects is to really understand how image-based sexual abuse occurs so we can empower law enforcement to be better advocates for victims of image-based sexual abuse and then be able to help them more effectively. Support from the WLP award will allow me to receive much needed assistance in data collection and coding for a large survey that I'm conducting on image-based sexual abuse. This research is part of a large larger initiative on the Sarasota Manatee campus to start a cybercrime research lab. This research lab will allow me and other cybercrime researchers to conduct research on technology facilitated violence and violence against women, as well as other innovative projects in cybercrime and cybersecurity. And this will further solidify University of South Florida's position as a real thought leader in this space. I have started a volunteer program in our biobehavioral lab to have students come in and learn about nursing research. Most people don't realize that nurses do biobehavioral research, so we're giving the university undergraduates and graduate students a chance to come into the biobehavioral lab and learn about nursing research by practicing. They are taught several different skills, and then we involve them in our research projects so that they can get their own publications and participate in our research.
The funding from this grant will allow us to support the students that we bring in as volunteers and then our plan is to grow the program so that we reach out to high school students in the area via a mechanism called a SEPA grant which will encourage high school students to come in and learn the procedures that we're teaching in the lab. Then those students can volunteer on other projects which will help us provide funding for our professors and other students who are doing research um, to submit their own grants. So it's really going to reach out in many different directions. I am so grateful that I was even considered for this award and um, I think it's going to make a huge difference and I just appreciate it. I can't, I can't say how grateful I am. This project focuses on a family reunification program for girls exploited in human trafficking. It's called Journey Homeward and it's a series of sessions to help with reunification and reintegration of families after a beloved family member has been traumatized by human trafficking. So through these sessions, the families learn about the trauma their child has went through, how the trauma has affected them, and also how their child may not be the same after experiencing this victimization. The funding can help this research in a variety of ways. First, it will help educate the staff at these various group homes and individual counseling centers so they can learn how to facilitate the family reunification project. It will also pay for the workbooks, the Journey Homeward workbooks for the families as well as the survivors themselves. A final part of the program is the graduation ceremony where the families exchange bracelets with one another that symbolize love and a mutual pledge for reunification and so the funding will also pay for those supplies. So the families don't have to pay for anything regarding training or workbooks or any of the other supplies. I am so thankful to receive the Dr. Kathleen Moore Faculty Excellence Award. I've been working with human trafficking victims in New York for the past four years and now since relocating to Florida to be able to continue my work to prevent and combat the exploitation of girls in Florida is just such an honor. And more importantly, I am just so grateful to be able to help provide promising programs and services to girls and young women in the Florida area. Our research focuses on increasing retention of women in STEM fields. More specifically, we're looking at increasing female students who are their first time in college. So as of right now, the statistics reports that we have less number of FTIC students who graduate compared to those who do who are not FTIC students. So we're looking at 33% of female students who do graduate in the four years. Now this statistics is lower than the number of female students who graduate overall in the university, significantly lower. So what the research focuses on is looking at the factors that impact their performance, either at the first level all the way to the fourth year. What can we do to address this gap? I want to actually purposefully create a mentoring circle for every female student that come through the College of Engineering to make sure that they have the right support system to allow them to thrive, for them to be able to succeed regardless of what challenges they're going through. I'm truly honored to be awarded this award. I would like to thank every member of the Kathleen Moore Faculty Excellence Award. I believe that this award would help foster learning of all women from different backgrounds. It would allow women um, to have an inclusive environment where women's voices are heard and women's voices are not just heard, but that we are actually fostering a community to encourage women to excel. So I really want to thank them for the opportunity and I'm honored to be one of the awardees.